Thanks to Audible for supporting The Bright Sessions. Start a 30-day trial and your first audiobook is free. Go to audible.com slash therapy or text therapy to 500-500. Patient number 7B3, session 36, female 15. Patient's desire to impress college prospects with a clean energy project has contributed greatly to improving control of her ability in addition to processing her grief. That said, I've asked Sarah to batten down the hatches, as it were, to ensure we don't lose data in the likelihood of another EMP event. Patient's Faraday cage designs, while not a perfect solution, have helped enormously in the past and given we're near the anniversary, it's best not to take any chances. Come in. Sorry, Sarah. Hi, Dr. Bright. Hi, Lou. What was that about? Oh, Sarah had me do a cage test before I came in to make sure I wouldn't um, fry your equipment, but I kind of made her hair go all over the place in the process. Pity I missed it. I mean, I could probably do it to your hair, but um, I feel like that would violate Dr. Klein's uh, respect. I guess I'll have to leave it to my imagination. Sorry, again, for the bother. Like I've said, it's really all right, Lou. Okay. So, how have you been doing? Okay, I think. This extra credit project is coming along really well. My parents keep telling me not to get my hopes too high. They said, it's like catching lightning in a bottle, kiddo. But then I was like, I'm the zap master. I could probably literally do that. Catch lightning in a bottle, I mean. But then they said I'd be grounded if I tried. That does sound dangerous. I know. I was kidding, mostly. Anyway, I told them if Jamie can work with the Navy on barnacle research at 16, then I got a pretty good shot for at least internships with those energy companies. Some of the smaller ones, I mean. The giants are pretty much run by butthole billionaires. Anyway, the big issue right now is storage. If I can figure that out, I got this thing locked down. I think. There's also the fact that whenever I lose focus, my voltage gets wonky, and then it's just a downward spiral of problems and parts I need to replace, and I've been burning through babysitting money to bribe the guys down at Water and Power as it is. Speaking of, would you be willing to call the local hardware stores and complain about the cost of their stuff? The prices for supplies I need is practically highway robbery, and my mom said she'd ground me if she caught me trying to buy from those shady characters. But I told her those hardware store guys are already shady characters. Sounds like you've been busy. Uh, How has your attention been? Have you been having a hard time losing focus at all while working? Lately, kinda. Yeah. Which is frustrating because it was going really well and I felt like I had a lot more control. I've been trying really hard to apply what you've been teaching me. Your work ethic is impressive, Lou. But have you given more thought to taking breaks? You mentioned maybe going to the movies with friends last week. Oh. Right. I forgot. Lou? I know. I know, but this project is super important, and I got a feeling about what you're going to say, Dr. Bright, but it's fine. I can make friends at college or in the industry. You know, Tesla didn't have many friends and was in love with a pigeon, and he turned out all right. Well, maybe not completely all right, but the man built a death ray. How cool is that? You're allowed to have friends, Lou. I know that. Then what is it? (sighs) I mean, you know... It's just weird. You've accomplished a lot in the past year. It's not odd to celebrate that with other people. I don't know if I want to. Because of Paige? No. Maybe. I don't know. We're approaching the year mark. How are you feeling? I don't know. I just... Sometimes it catches me off guard. How so? Like... The other day. I ran into her mom at the grocery store. And how was that? (sighs) We both... looked at each other. Like we'd only just remembered how long it'd been. And then it was like it had just happened. I told her I'd call her and left really quickly because I was afraid I'd, you know. It's perfectly normal for those feelings to resurface around anniversaries. 
The fact you kept control and took yourself out of the situation shows enormous progress. I know that. I... I'm sorry. Didn't mean to snap. It's okay. I mean, I know I've been making progress or whatever with this whole electricity thing, but when it comes to this other stuff, I don't know. It's stupid. I'm willing to bet it's not. Have you... Have you ever lost someone, Dr. Bright? I'm sorry, that's, uh, that's really personal. I have, in a manner of speaking. Do you ever still wish you could talk to them? Do you still wish you could talk to her? Yeah. I feel stupid, but I do. It's not stupid. When... When people we care about leave us, we don't lose the desire to talk to them. Sometimes things are left unsaid, and sometimes... That's not it, though. What's not it? I mean... I got to say everything I wanted to say. Even though it felt like... It felt like it all happened overnight, it actually lasted a couple months. So, I had time. I didn't want Paige to be... to be gone and not know. Especially about, you know, the whole Zapmaster thing. How did you feel after telling her? I was really happy. Like... I was still worried and scared, but it was nice that I could make her smile by using it in little ways. Nothing big, nothing like what I did right after, but, um, like, I would recharge her phone by just holding it. Make the battery just go whoop. I had to be careful, though, not to do anything to the machines hooked up to her. And how did she respond? I mean, she was so cool with it. I remember she laughed because she realized I was the one who whipped the library computers. Nobody knew who checked out what, and they had to recatalog the whole system. I was so embarrassed, but she had like five books overdue, so she called me the king of thieves, savior of stolen books. Her parents found them, the overdue books, when they, uh, when they boxed up her stuff. Mostly short story collections. She liked those. Lou? Right. Uh, I guess what I was getting at, um, I didn't, I didn't think about how there might be more. More what? Stuff. That after she was gone, I'd want to tell her more stuff as time passed. And I know I'm lucky. I know that a lot of people don't get to tell someone they love how much they love them, how much they mean to them, but but there are so many new things that happen in a year that I want to tell her, but I can't. What are some things you wish you could tell her? I don't know. Stupid stuff? Like how Mr. Soto said he wouldn't write my recommendation letter, or how Cody Kavanaugh is still a jerk to Hannah and me during lab, or just, I don't know, dumb stuff. Sounds like pretty important stuff to you. Maybe. It's just, it doesn't matter what the stuff is. If it's stupid or important, because no matter what, it just keeps piling and piling up, and the weight of all of it I can feel it on my chest and it's crushing me. And I'm so scared because I have a whole lifetime ahead of me and it's just gonna get heavier and heavier. You have experienced something that most people your age haven't. And I know it doesn't always feel this way, but you're a very strong person. No, I'm not. It's been a year and I don't feel any better. 
I feel like my muscles are about to give out because I can't. We were supposed to carry these things for each other. That's what a best friend is for. They carry what you can't because for some reason it's easier to carry someone else's pain, but... But now I have nothing from her to carry except for her dying, and it's just me and that weight and nothing else. Lou, I need you to take a deep breath. Really, I'm sorry, Dr. Bright. That's okay. It's why we have safeguards. I'm so embarrassed. You have absolutely nothing to be embarrassed about. I lost control, and after seeing you for so many months... Look at me. <sighs> Grieving is a messy process. There are going to be days when you feel okay and can look back at your time with Paige with joy. And then there will be other days... Like today. <sighs> right. Like today. When it's hard to see past the pain. I'm just... scared. What are you scared of? That I'm gonna... That I'm gonna hurt somebody. When I hurt... I'm not hurt. Sarah's not hurt. My computer may need a little help, but that's why we made backups. You're safe here. That's not... I mean... You're gonna think I'm a bad person. Do you feel like you're a bad person? Look, I'm not... I'm not gonna hurt anyone, okay? Okay. But it's just... We're learning about the brain's electrical impulses in my bio class, and I started thinking, maybe I could manipulate that, make people feel different things. But now I'm scared that, that when I hurt, I'm going to want to make other people hurt the way I do. But I swear, Dr. Bright, I, I wouldn't, and I hate myself for thinking that. Having those thoughts can be scary, but listen to yourself. You thought of the possibility, and then you rejected it. That's important. That's the part about you that's true. I guess. Could you tell me what spurred these thoughts in the first place? Maybe because... Because I just feel alone. Like, I'm the kid whose best friend died, and it's just... Everybody else has someone to help carry them, and I don't. I walk around with this huge weight, and nobody seems to notice. So maybe if I could make them feel what I do, maybe it'd feel like someone else was helping me carry it. Like in Lord of the Rings, when Samwise is telling Frodo to share the load, it's like, I'm Frodo on the edge of collapsing because the Nazgul killed my Samwise. But remember... Frodo had the whole fellowship. Are there people you could reach out to to help you carry that weight? I mean, talking to you helps a little bit. How about any friends from school? Classmates you get along with? I don't know. What don't you know? They're nice and everything. It's just they're not... They're not what? They're not Paige. What do you mean by that? I mean, she's... was... a person. It's not like I can just go to the hardware store and pick up a replacement. Making new friends doesn't mean you're replacing her. Isn't it, though? Your relationship with Paige was and is still important. It always will be. When you make new friendships, you're creating new bonds, unique to the people you share them with. No one can replace Paige, but you can still build a support network. What's the point if it keeps changing? You'll keep changing too, Lou. Your needs may change, and so will your friends, and that's okay. It doesn't make those relationships any less important than they are in the moment. <sighs> so I guess this means I gotta go to the movies this week? It doesn't have to be the movies, but it may be helpful to reach out to some friends or classmates. 
even if it's just sitting with them at lunch. Whatever you're comfortable with. This is gonna cut into my Zap Master practice time. You might find that walking away from Zap Master time will result in you feeling refreshed when you go back to it. Oh, I can see if Hannah will go with me to that neon shop downtown. I promise I'll keep my ability in check, just want to see all the cool lights. You know, Nikola Tesla developed something super similar to a neon sign. Never took off, but that's Tesla for you. That sounds like a fun outing. Hannah's your lab partner, right? Yeah. She's really good at the lab write-up, so I paired up with her fast. Well then, I think it sounds like the two of you could have some fun together. And maybe... I was thinking of asking Paige's parents if they'd go with me. To visit her, I mean. I figured they might like that, especially since I promised her mom I'd call her. That's a really thoughtful idea, Lou. Thanks. I'm kind of nervous, but it feels... right. Anyway, I better get going. I know we went a little over to deal with my... you know. Absolutely not a problem. I look forward to hearing about your trip to the Neon Sign Store next week. Oh, uh, Dr. Bright, I hope, I hope you have a good network too, for those days when you hurt. Thank you, Lou. Anyway, see you next week. That was eventful. I'm disappointed in losing some of the session, but the patient is making enormous progress. While her clean energy project is exciting to say the least, it's a good sign she's feeling ready to stop burying herself in work and reach out again. I'll have to refresh myself on her ability's relationship with brain electricity. I recall a couple concerning cases of the ability being used on others, and one in which it was used as treatment on the atypical individual themselves. Given the patient's proclivity for following scientific rabbit holes to sometimes dangerous results, I'll need to keep an eye out to make sure she's not planning on doing anything potentially... disastrous. And now to check on the state of Sarah's computer. (sighs) What would it look like if we all listened more? Listening to audiobooks motivates us, inspires us, even brings us closer together. And there's no better place to listen than Audible, because now Audible members get even more. Exclusive audio fitness programs, audiobooks, and Audible Originals. With Audible Originals, you can experience custom content made exclusively for Audible members. And Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet. If you haven't yet experienced the magic of the Lord of the Rings for yourself, Audible is the perfect place to dive in. You can listen to the narrated series or a full cast dramatized version of the stories. However you choose to listen, you'll be inspired by the friendships that Frodo and his fellowship share, just like Lou was. Every month, as an Audible member, you get one credit good for any audiobook you'd like, plus two Audible originals from a changing selection you can't get anywhere else. Audible members also get access to audio fitness and health workouts created exclusively for Audible. Plus, your books are yours to keep. With Audible, you can go back and re-listen anytime, even if you cancel your membership. And if you didn't like your audiobook, exchange it, no questions asked. Start a 30-day trial and your first audiobook is free. Go to audible.com slash therapy or text therapy to 500-500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash therapy or text therapy to 500-500. The Bright Sessions was created by me, Lauren Shippen. Julia Morizawa is the voice of Dr. Bright and Eli Barraza was the voice of Lou. This episode was written by Eli Barraza, edited by myself, and directed and sound designed by Misha Stanton. All our music is composed and performed by Evan Cunningham, and our psychological consultant is Elizabeth Laird. Our next bonus episode will be coming out on November 19th. Until then, thanks for listening, and stay strange. <laughs>